So welcome along to the next uh, episode, the next show of the I Photography Podcast. If you're watching this in video form, we've got Emily with us today. Hi, hi. Um, and this is a bit of a special edition of our podcast series, isn't it really as well? Because this is, um, it's kind of talking a little bit more about a course that we've got coming up. Um, or if you're listening to this in a couple of weeks' time, there's a course that's already been released, which is Emily's Wedding Masterclass. Because that's what you do, isn't it, effectively, for a living? You are a pro-wedding photographer, videographer, isn't it? I am indeed, yes. That's my uh, full-time job now for the last 10 years. Oh, and it's been wonderful. Uh, and hopefully I've got a, a little bit of knowledge, lots of knowledge to impart. Mm, uh, lots of trial and error and learning <laughs> from my mistakes. <laughs> This is how anybody learns, isn't it, really? Especially in photography, there's no kind of set platform for it. But with that said, this is kind of what Emily's uh, brand new course is kind of designed to do. So this iPhotography Wedding Masterclass is, is quite literally that. It, it's an A to Z of if you want to get into wedding photography, that if you've never done anything like this before, or even if you've maybe done a little bit of weddings, maybe photographed a, a friend's wedding and they, they quite liked it and you've, you've got maybe like your son or daughter's or grandchildren's kind of weddings coming up, um, and you just want to be able to kind of take some proper images, you know, professional looking images, then I think Emily's got an absolute, you know, amazing course. I think you're lined up um, oh, coming you. out very soon. Yeah. So um, we want to kind of talk a little bit about the course itself, um, but then also kind of give you a little bit of a behind the scenes as to kind of how the course was filmed, what we did, because we don't really talk about that that much. We talk a lot about photography in lots of different areas in our podcast normally. So this is something kind of quite specific to eye photography, really actually talking about how we made the course, because it's very unique in that way, which we'll kind of come to in a, in a short while. But Firstly, there was kind of a couple of questions I wanted to ask you about it as to like, you know, why you wanted to kind of create the course in, in the first place, really. But was there anything kind of particular that drove you to want to come in there and kind of create this course with us? Well, I have wanted to make a course on wedding photography for a number of years now. But the trouble with that and a standard year is I don't have enough time to fit it all in and perhaps if you wanted to film it in the summer where you could show the best results that's usually when I'm working flat out so I've just not had the time and with um, recent world events with lockdown and things it's actually given me a minute to breathe and a minute to think hey let's use this time as an opportunity to do something that I've wanted for a long time and hopefully help some people as well yeah and that, that's a nice thing that you know we can you know, can be able to give back because the idea of learning and learning from home, as you say, because loads of people have been kind of stuck at home for the past, uh, well, like feels like years, like but <laughs> it's about 18 months or so now, um, that, that, that kind of home learning and online learning has absolutely boomed. And, and I think now, I mean, I keep reading a lot and I know you've been talking to me kind of before we, we came on air about how the wedding photography is almost at this kind of precipice that it's about to boom again because weddings have been held back for so long couples haven't been able to get married or have civil partnerships or anything like that um that really you know you're at this kind of uh, front door of, of everybody going yeah i want to book again i mean have you started to see that in your own work now yes inquiries are coming in thick and fast and there's a few things that's going on because there is a backlog as you say there is a lot of people that are desperate to get suppliers and there's a lot of suppliers that have got full books because things from 2020, 2021 have been pushed and pushed and pushed back. And there's even in my own diary, there's some couples that have took double or even triple booked on a date and you've had to turn people down. Oh, no. The second thing that's happening, which I think is an incredible opportunity for uh, beginner wedding photographers, is smaller weddings are becoming much more the norm there's been so many times where we've been um during the covid time where it's been 15 guests or 30 guests or even fewer where the couples have actually said you know what it's not how i envisioned it but i've really enjoyed it it's more intimate it's it's a better environment yeah. and i think people that have been to those weddings might take that on board and realize maybe you don't have to spend as much if it's fewer people and maybe there's more of a market now for people coming into the wedding photography industry and um, people want all different budgets and also smaller days as well yeah so i would say out of all the time that i've been doing this there is never a better time if you wanted to get your foot in the door the this year next year is going to be you're going to be rushed off your feet as far as I can see. It's a brilliant time, I should say, yeah, to get into it. And the, the thing that we were also you were saying before about before we kind of came on uh, about that you on top of the weddings that you've got booked, you've also got friends and colleagues in your network that are asking you to come as a second shooter. So it's it's even you've got the responsibility of your own clients, but then there's even more work on top, not even being the 
a kind of um, first photographer, you you're being a second shooter, and I think there's it there sounds like that. I imagine there's opportunities for that, you know, abundantly across the uh, the whole industry. Is it? Yes, absolutely. Um, what is happening, as you say, because people are sort of doing double wedding weekends, triple wedding weekends. My rule pre-COVID was I'll never do more than two in a row because yeah. you just want to have <laughs> enough headspace and you want to be present. But now because my books are becoming so full, it is doing three weddings and then sometimes midweek weddings now because people are just getting oh, yeah. booked in wherever they can, yeah. the, whenever the registrars are free. Yeah. So my schedule and my previous rules are out the window. <laughs> so me and my uh, wedding photography colleagues in the northwest of the UK, we're all mucking in. Yeah. You know, we, We've got an open forum. If anyone wants to second shoot for anybody, if anyone's available, they're also looking for beginners to just assist. Because if you're on your third wedding of the week, having a second pair of hands there that has the schedule and, and, and has a bit of a backup. Yeah. You know, there's so many opportunities and there will be for the foreseeable future if you're looking to assist, second shoot and also start weddings in your own right. That's right. That, that probably is a good place to start, I imagine, because yeah. if you were to throw yourself in and say, right, I'm going to go and photograph a wedding with 300 people, as much as that may not happen in the UK at the minute. But I think, like you said, the smaller weddings, A, are quite a nice way to grade yourself into it but also not being solely responsible as like the only photographer there you know going in as a second shooter sounds sounds like a great kind of thing to do yeah i discuss it in in the course and on a few blog posts as well with i photography where i did start as an assistant and as a second photographer before jumping in so you can do both you can either second shoot and get your experience that way or begin in your own right but looking back, if there was the opportunity to do maybe a four-hour wedding with 25 guests, it's not as overwhelming, as you say, as doing a massive wedding with 300 guests that's an 11-hour day. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's it's a great, great time. And hopefully the course that we've created will get people sort of up and running to, to monopolize on this. Yeah. Because it, it, I've said it myself several times, this is the course I wish I had 10 years ago when I was starting out. 10 years ago, there was none of this. It was <laughs> jump in and hope for the best and yeah. maybe learn from the most established photographer in your town. You know, that that's the way that people used to start. But now with, with, with online courses and, and, and everything that we're doing with iPhotography, you can get the knowledge and you can really, really hit the ground running yeah. uh, with with less mistakes, which, which uh, wow, over my time I've made many. <laughs> well, it's, it's a good point though, in fairness, because you do think about the how uh, technology technology has developed us as people and, and how we learn. It's We've come away from the, the, the actual classroom itself and, you know, um, adult courses and night school, etc. that, yeah, you can just do it from home. That, and, and with this course, there's no difference. You know, you don't have to be out in the field it's not like a direct one-to-one -one lesson in terms of being with a person but it gives you all the exact same knowledge all the learning if not more and show it in a better way and because that's the thing kind of want to come to next is that um, for you to kind of expel the virtues of why this course is different from you know the courses that you may have seen online these days but what do you think kind of makes it stand out more than anything so when I was researching what is currently in the market, there's a lot of very talented people doing a lot of wonderful things, but the majority of it is theory-based. It's them sat in front of a camera talking, when you are down the aisle, you do this, this and this, and, and thinking about it in a very theoretical way. What I wanted to create with eye photography was a very practical way. It's like, the way I learned was watching over someone's shoulder who was more experienced and, and just watching what they do and learning. The course that we've created is a live action wedding where you would essentially, as the viewer, be over my shoulder and I'll be telling you my thought processes and pausing the live action and going through it. So it's even more beneficial yeah. than literally shadowing someone because obviously you can't pause a real wedding. <laughs> yeah, I might imagine that. Can you just stop there for a minute? I've just, I've just got something to film behind me. <laughs> yeah, and, and me personally, I'm quite a practical learner. I like to see other people doing what I need to do and, and that's how I learn. So the idea of someone watching how I shoot a wedding, me talking about it, me pausing, me saying, this is why I'm stood here because the lighting is coming in this way. These are the camera settings I'm currently using. Yeah. It, it's it's the most short of me being with you in person telling you what to do every single step of the way yeah. this is me doing it in video form and 
That's, yeah, it's, I, I think if I'd have had that when I was starting, I would have charged more, more, more quickly. I would have just been more confident. And just knowing that what I'm doing is right compared to what other wedding photographers are doing, I think would have been a great benefit as well. Yeah, I, I, and this is why when you kind of came to us and proposed the, the idea of the course and what this kind of USP is, in effect, that it's a it, it's, it's a staged wedding, as you say, that you know we've we've kind of brought in people and reenacted all the processes, etc. It was just like this is so unique that. Like you said, you don't have that anywhere else in the industry, and and it's it's brilliant for people because obviously with our course kind of um, well, I say of course being international, but you being in the UK, that you can teach people exactly the same as you would as if you were in person, whether regardless of they live wherever in the world, and I, I think that's so nice because it makes it so accessible and everybody kind of gets the same treatment because we've we've considered loads of different aspects um, in the course itself because it's not a let's say a traditional church wedding, though that's covered, there's other other kind of scenarios, isn't there? Another yeah, scenes? we do uh, indoor weddings, we do uh, outdoor weddings, how to deal with harsh lighting, we do church weddings, we do all different styles that you may come across. So it's not just one specific niche of weddings that we cover, we do try to be quite bold. And I tell you what, I planned this this staged wedding more than my own blooming wedding. <laughs> I got the colour scheme, we did the set dressing, we did the candles down the aisle, we, we, we liaison with the venue so much. It was even down to what what colours the groom's tie and we'll get the flowers to match yeah. and we'll get all these centrepieces. The attention to detail in this course, in the live action wedding aspect of it, is second to none. Mm. I don't think anyone would have gone to the lengths that we did to make it look like an authentic wedding, yeah. to have family and guests there, to have a legitimate couple there. It was above and beyond. And it's those things that I found personally that have been missing in other courses I've, I've been on. It's like you may be stood in a venue, but the venue's empty and the presenter will go, imagine the couple are at the end of the aisle. Yeah. We have the couple. You know, how, how do you do centerpiece photography or, or detail photography if you don't have the authentic details in place yeah this is for all intents and purposes a real planned wedding <laughs> and, that, and that's the crazy bit it's like you, you're so right that you know i looking back on it the planning that had to go into it we, you know we've got an actual wedding venue um you know we were using the the kind of the gardens outside indoors the preparation suites they've got so literally if you've got married yourself and you you've got married at some sort of country hall or, or a state house etc this will look exactly the same in terms of all the topics we've covered because maybe kind of going a to z but not maybe going super in depth because sometimes it's hard to imagine pretty much you've gone through from you know planning yourself and this is kind of starts off before the wedding you know actually kind of how to kind of create a plan yourself or what you're going to shoot, things to look out for. Um, I assume kind of like preparing your kit and everything is covered. Everything from start to finish is covered from not even from when you rock up at the wedding. It's it's how do you how do you approach a consult with a couple? Yeah. What information do you need to have before you begin? How do you start making up your own contracts? How do you promote your own business? How do you find your ideal client? It's the back end as much as the live action event. So the idea of the course is from you saying today, I want to become a wedding photographer. I take you through how to set up your stall, how to make your branding, how to get your first clients. And then we go through the entire wedding in a practical exercise. And then at the end, we have how do you deliver? How do you wow customers? How do you get repeat business and, and, and referral schemes, etc.? And how do you edit the photos as well? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot a of in-depth with how you cull uh, a wedding down from the thousands of images into the 400 <laughs> that you may <laughs> deliver. Uh, so everything from start to finish and beyond yeah. is covered. It is it is honestly a masterclass. It, it covers I, everything. I think that's that is the best way to explain it. That it is you know literally you without Emily kind of being next to you and, and kind of as you say showing you what buttons to press. This does the same thing in effect, doesn't it? Really, and it's yeah. it, it is it's a big course, but wedding photography requires a lot of attention to detail, especially if you're doing it or proposing to do it as a business. So, you know, a bit of a, a side hustle. Or as we said before, even if you just want to improve, if you're already a wedding photographer and you're looking to actually shape your business up, I imagine people could kind of use this course as well for that, couldn't they? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, business best practice 
and how to create your branding and things. It's it's very, very in-depth. And it's really good because it does tick all the boxes and cover all the bases where if you may have had a few weddings under your belt and you think, well, I'm good at doing the practical part, but I'm struggling finding my own editing style or vice versa, you, you've got it covered. One thing I struggled with a lot was finding a cohesive style that, you know, you want someone to look at a picture and go, that's me, I took that, that's yeah. an Emily Lowry photo. <laughs> and that comes with consistent editing in, in Lightroom. And it comes with, you know, even when I started, I didn't know how to colour wedding. What makes this photograph better than the second photograph that I took a second later? It's all these questions that can be so overwhelming because sometimes being a wedding photographer is a very isolated thing because you are a one woman or one man shop. So it's, it's finding all those little things that I've learned along the way and just giving you all the answers straight away. Perfect. You couldn't ask for anything else really, could you? It, it's literally, you know, without us supplying the bride and groom, you've got, to, you've got everything else you <laughs> could possibly with need. with pack bride and groom. <laughs> there you go. Just open them up, yeah. stick them at the end of the aisle as well and shoot and there you go, you've got a wedding sorted. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I mean, going into... Um, I know we talked some before, obviously, about how the wedding is kind of, it's staged, it, it's very, very unique in that way as well. But, you know, behind the scenes of how we actually filmed everything, it was it was really fun to do as well. Um, you'll, you'll notice myself in, in the um, in the course as well. I jump in every now and again just to help Emily on a, a few bits and pieces. Um, and if you're familiar already with eye photography, they're going to see a few familiar faces, won't they? Yes, there's a lot of familiar faces in the uh, the family party and the bridal party. And also, you another good point to bring up is we did stage Stephen as a second photographer on the day. So it, if you are working with another photographer, it might give you ideas on, on how to position yourself in mm. certain parts of the day, how you don't get in each other's shots. Or if you are a second photographer to begin with, it might give you a better understanding of what might be expected of you if you were shadowing somebody else. I was just thinking of that, yeah. yeah. You know, people that they can take kind of my point of view in a way of what I covered in the course. Um, about how to conduct themselves, just so I say they don't get in everyone's way. Yeah, it's a really, really valid. That's definitely point. nobody has ever done that before. Oh God, we no. have totally gone above and that's beyond. It. This is like a second shooter's, <laughs> first shooter's course. And, and even if you're just getting married as a bride and groom, you know how to behave around your wedding photographer and yeah. what they're going to expect. So, literally, anybody getting married, going into a church, that's you know, it. wherever it is, you know, you need this course. You, everybody does. <laughs> but yeah, but you're right. There's, um, you know, in terms of the actual course itself, obviously. Um, at the period that we filmed it, we were we weren't we weren't at the height of any kind of COVID pandemic. Things had started to dip down quite a bit, and so it gave us that opportunity to actually be able to film, albeit still with restrictions, etc. So you know, off camera, everybody was still kind of you know, wearing masks, and even when we were filming, just to be able to make the kind of course as evergreen as possible, and it didn't have that kind of pandemic feel to it. Um, people are spaced out, but that was just really kind of for, for safety and kind of comfort in places. And a lot of times we did book family, friends, couples that mm. were in bubbles together. Yeah. So whenever you do see people together, it's it's because they are in their own bubble. So there's a, we got around a lot of it yeah. very, very well. But as you say, off camera, everyone was spaced out, oh, masked yeah. up. And the staff... Hand sanitizers. Yeah. Like, <laughs> honestly, my hands were like so <laughs> covered in the stuff afterwards. I almost like dropped a lens because I hadn't like properly like uh, embedded it into my hands. But there, there was, yeah, in that basis, like a lot of kind of precautions taken. But yeah. set, weddings were still taking place. Yeah. At that point, I think there was like limitations of like, 30 people something like that yeah you'll see from the course obviously if you come on um you know we had less than that but it was enough to you know you know simulate what you know a wedding could be because like you said not everybody has 300 people at a wedding regardless of a pandemic and yeah. i think even my wedding we, we maybe had about 50 people tops i have 16 at mine <laughs> there you go that's it so you know it's not about kind of how many people you have really but this course is so scalable for the fact that you've taught tom dealing with small groups and then big groups even though it may only be like seven or eight you know in the examples of the course but that's so scalable with all the the actual positions and poses and ideas that you've taught as well so yeah it, it doesn't matter almost like how many people we had in it and as well even if you do have 300 people at a wedding you're still generally only taking photographs of the bridal party mm. so as long as we had our bridesmaids and our, our groomsmen and we had the father of the bride etc that is exactly what you would do regardless of the size of the wedding because yeah. a lot of guests are just 
I Guess. suppose, yeah, if there was that many, like 300, there's only pretty much one shot you can do, exactly. isn't there? So it's like, yeah, it's you know, that's just by the vibe, really. But but yeah, um, you're right. So like talking about kind of, you know, what, what how we filmed everything. Um, I say, if you're familiar with eye photography, you'll recognise, uh, 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 get my words out, head tutor Rebecca. She makes an appearance as a bridesmaid. She was a wonderful bridesmaid. A wonderful yeah. bridesmaid. And then there is uh, tutor Nick. He appears as well as father of the bride yep. this is it they'll have like imdb kind of acting <laughs> credits by the end of this <laughs> they're brilliant at it and they loved it but yeah we got a lot of our own kind of friends and family involved as you say people that were kind of part of our household household bubbles or yep. close family bubbles um to, to act in it and it was great so we, we filmed it over a couple of days um at a wonderful wedding venue shout out to Carden park in cheshire um they did an absolutely marvellous job allowing us to kind of stage the entire wedding as if it was real. Because... They took it so seriously as well. Like yeah. I was I was talking to, to the, the lady that did the flowers and, and the, the wedding coordinator at the venue, and they did it like an authentic day. They they went above and beyond. Oh, you see from the way they laid the room yeah. out, it's like... It was beautiful. You, you could have actually got married there and then, or we mm-hmm. would have needed as a, a proper officiant, etc. But, but yeah, although, I mean, the couple themselves... Um, Rob and Gemma, they were already married, mm-hmm. so so they basically had worn their own kind of wedding gear and their families that came along with them, again, they basically kind of suited and booted themselves up, so it pretty much reminded them of their own wedding. Um, but and they when, was... she, when I delivered for the, the gallery, because I, I, I delivered the, the full gallery to them, um, she cried. <laughs> oh, bless So her. I'm like, yes! So that's it, so we've literally, even in our kind of staged wedding, that you know, we've, we've gone to the degree of actually kind of delivering the images to the client, even though they're already married, and these pictures aren't of the actual wedding but yep. but yeah I mean get, you'll get to see all of that and obviously if you're watching the, the YouTube version of this uh, this little chat we'll kind of throw up some pictures of, of what you'll see and these are like the, the, the images that you'll learn to be able to take in them um, as well as some of the behind the scenes footage. That's a good thing to cover. In terms of camera skills I, I we, we did a nice broad range there are a few lessons within this masterclass that have more advanced techniques like like flash photography off camera flash uh, using a different lighting and and like led panel lights mm-hmm. but the way that i wanted it to be was as long as you kind of know your way around a camera you know your aperture your shutter speed and your iso then that stuff is all catered for. As long as you know your way around a camera, you don't have to be a professional 10 years of experience to do this. You just need to know how to change your settings and off you go. But there are more advanced lessons within the course to cater for everyone. Yeah. So yeah. I would say sort of uh, beginner slash intermediate all the way up to advanced techniques are covered. Yeah, so yeah, that is a very good point to mention as well because a lot of people will be thinking that I've only just picked up a camera, you know, is this course for me? As you say, a little bit of learning beforehand, which you can do through other courses that we have also got before mm-hmm. you maybe feel like you want to progress. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's you know, for some people, it may be a, a big leap to go from just buying a camera and then thinking, all right, I bought my camera on Monday. By Tuesday, I want to be a wedding <laughs> photographer. I mean, we've got the skills to help you with that, but it, it's a progressive thing. I mean, you said it took you a while that you started off as a second shooter before you mm-hmm. actually went you know, fully on your own, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, it did. And I would recommend, while there is a great opportunity at the moment, don't rush until you feel confident. Hopefully this course will give you all the confidence you need, whether that's taking out some friends and family and doing some couple photographs Mm -hmm. to, to sort of get going. There's a lot of prompt ideas, how to get couples relaxed with one another, how to be on their wavelength, how for them to be comfortable in front of the camera and not be intimidated. And I go through a lot of my own tried and true techniques and prompts where we just have a little bit of a giggle with the couple and it's nice and low key. So if you wanted to take those and put them in a couple portraiture scenario, it would Mm. be fine. A lot of the prompts where it's smaller group shots, you could apply those to uh, family portraits. Yeah. So there's ways of testing out these skills that you're going to learn before you go into your first wedding. It's a good point, actually, because I'm, I'm thinking about it now that it, it's almost like a multi-level course. Um, as you say, that you know, you can extract what we what we kind of shot with uh, Gemma and Rob about the couple's portraits, and that could be, if you take the context of a wedding even out of that, about how to shoot for couples, then I know I talked about posing shapes and arrangements, so you could apply that to family portraits, again, whether it's at a wedding or not. So even if you are maybe a wedding photographer, Currently, and you're thinking about expanding to like family portraiture and couples, etc. 
It's or all in there. It's there. It's all in Isn't there. Isn't it? Honestly. It's very comprehensive. The more you think about how much we covered, yeah. you even did that lesson uh, with how to get children comfortable in front of the camera yeah, as well. Yeah. You covered everything. Honestly, I mean, of course we're going to say it's great, but it really, <laughs> it really, really, is. really is. Honestly, <laughs> and I, I mean, I wrote a few notes about what we wanted to talk about, but a lot of the stuff we've been talking about now has just been coming to me it's thinking, true. actually, that could work really well. This could work really well. Yeah. But, but I mean, we had a great laugh again, even like say we say filming the, the course itself because we did it over a couple of days kind of here in our studio and then actually out on location. I remember, I, I know you were probably filming at the time, but there was a knock on the door and we were up in the bridal suite doing that section. Um, and as a fella came in, and bearing in mind, I'd not met everybody. I knew kind of names of people that were coming along, but I'd not met them previously. Um, so this fella come in and said, I'm, I'm here for the filming. So it's like, okay. Come assume, on in. Assumed you, you're with us. You can be one and of he, the guys. And he stood at the door and he's looking. I had to be really quiet because I think you were filming in the other room. And he's like, I don't think I'm meant to be here. And he's <laughs> like, well, yeah, well, we're filming. Well, wait, wait until we stop and then, you know, we can kind of find out, you know, where you're meant to be, etc. And he's like, this is not the golf interview, is it? <laughs> it's like, so we just no. Stole <laughs> the poor guy was like mortified. He was like, feel like he was going to be in a wedding at the minute. As it's like well, the golf, you, you wouldn't have thought there was another interview or That's another kind of film fantastic. taking place. So yeah, we almost had like a pro golf friend up kind of walking into the. Uh, we nearly <laughs> killed course. Nick. Oh my god! Yes. Yeah, we did um, like yeah. a po- posing for uh, all of the groomsmen at a bar, oh, and yeah. it was a proper only fools and horses moment. He leaned oh. on the bar and didn't know that the hat the was, up. was <laughs> up. And it was yeah. You've ever seen that scene of Del Boy when he just flies to the bar, stay cool, stay cool, and he just. <laughs> I don't know if you've got the footage of it, but oh I, if I do, I'll root it out and put it in because that uh, no, Nick took it in good oh. good spirits, but it was it really did. Make yeah, so, so I remember I was I was talking to the camera at the time, so it's happened behind me, and then every, I could see everybody's faces from you and uh, everybody else that was behind the camera just start giggling. as like, what what have I done? Yeah, <laughs> it's like he's just literally went shoof, straight through. But oh my god, that made me howl. And and then I remember the other scene that we did. Um, with the big giant chessboard outside. That went a little bit surreal. It that was, was not so planned. much fun. <laughs> but that just that was like Jem and Rob all over. That that's them as kind of personalities really that they are. They were riding oh. the, the rooks and yes, the knights. Yeah. It's like the Harry Potter moment where <laughs> like Ron and all that, they get on the horses and uh, they're the knights and everything like that. But then it just turned into a fight. Yeah. <laughs> they're a very loving couple. They've been married for a number of years, but yeah, this turned out to be like all out war. We went to have this kind of giant chessboard kind of game and get a few shots out of it. And it just became they into had like a right laugh, though. Some, some big fight between the two of them. But it was it, it, it was a play fight, we should, we oh, should yeah, establish. Yeah, should it was all fun. <laughs> um, it's two-way. <laughs> and it was a great example in that lesson to show that sometimes if you do have an extrovert couple with a big personality, yeah. the best you can do is get out of their way and just let them enjoy themselves. Yeah. And, and it was a very, very fun way to show that every couple is different. Every wedding is different. You may get a more shy couple. And, and we had the advice on how to deal with those sorts of people. And then if you do have the extrovert people, just yeah. wind them up and let them go. <laughs> That's it. Well, that, if anything, it makes your job easier. <laughs> it does. And, I mean, you talk about finding your perfect client. And if you find that you prefer that type of photography, that you literally want your clients to kind of go and you shoot more candidly as opposed to being in charge of everything, and that's not a bad thing either. Some people like to, to have everything set in stage and that's brill. But, you know, you've got advice for that about kind of how to market yourself to find people like Gemma and Rob and, and you know, and if you want people that are a little bit more conservative from them, you, you've got, you, that, that's covered in a huge section of the it course, is isn't absolutely it? absolutely. One of the things that I, I took a longer time to learn than I should is while you are the, the the king or queen of your own business, you don't have to do any job that makes you feel uncomfortable or you don't want to. You don't have to say yes to every wedding. If you attract the people that you want to work with, every wedding should be fun. It should give you great portfolio. It should be profitable. And it's about tailoring your business to pinpoint it and point at these people that you want to attract. So one thing that I learned it took me a long time to learn actually, was that you are the king or queen of your own business and it is important that you learn over time who you work well with and who you enjoy shooting. Every wedding should be fun, it should be people that you really get on with and it should be profitable and it should give you really good portfolio to sort of capture more people and attract more people and you don't have to work with people that you don't 
feel like you're going to be a good fit with. Like Stephen's just said, if it, if it needs to be more posed and more somber, that's not my ideal client. So yeah. they, these are not the people I'm trying to attract. They may be the people that you're, you're trying to attract. There's nothing wrong with, with whatever you're going for. But it's about being as specific as possible, learning who you get on with, learning what makes you happy as a creative person, and learning how to get those people into your business. And that's what we cover a lot in the course. Indeed. I will show you how to identify who you like to work with and then get them. Yeah, and yeah. that's it. Grab them. Grab You're them. You're mine. <laughs> yes. And, and that's and there is there is so much more, even that we've talked about in you know, this kind of past half an hour, 40 minutes about what the course covers um obviously you're going to find out everything if you kind of join up to the course um and the course itself is kind of coming out late june 2021 just if you happen to be listening to this podcast uh, a little bit later um and again we'll put a link in the description so whether you're watching this on youtube or you're listening to it on your podcast player we'll put the link in there so anybody can kind of find out about the course um and obviously join up and get all this wealth of knowledge that Emily has got in her head. We've shaken her like the magic eight ball and it's all fallen <laughs> out and put it into this wonderful course. Um, and it's it's so special. It really, really is. This is why we wanted to kind of make a, a special edition of this uh, podcast show just to tell you about it because it's so cool. And I'm just so glad that we've, we've kind of got I am. that. I'm so proud of it. You know, it was months and months and months of work to get it together and years and years and years of me being a wedding photographer distilled down into this masterclass and I yeah. genuinely I am really proud of it and I think it can really really help a lot of people. Indeed if Carlsberg did wedding photography courses <laughs> this would probably be the best. Other well, so, are available. <laughs> They're not as good though. <laughs> but thank you very much for uh, watching or listening to another episode of the I Photography Podcast. We'll have another episode out uh, next week. So keep following, subscribing. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. And you know, hit the like button, hit the uh, the share, the notifications, all those buttons that are totally relevant because it really, really helps us out. And uh, thank you so much, Emily. So My what, pleasure. You've got weddings coming up in the next kind of week. I so. am rushed off my little feet. We got the course done at just the right time. We did, didn't we? I don't think I could do it now. Everything's starting to open up again so i'm so glad that we've got we just it had that time perfect <laughs> yeah. everything fell into the right time so here we go maybe it's the right time for you to kind of check out uh, wedding photography as a business so thank you very much for listening and watching and we'll catch you again soon bye for now bye